Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you follow me through on this quick little journey we're going to take tonight. And uh, if you do like it, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll catch the future updates. The problem with engineering something so well is that it gets taken for granted. Take the modern plug for example. We all use them every single day. In fact, some of us use them multiple times a day and yet we don't give much thought to it. So follow me as I investigate the history of the modern three pin plug. It struck me the other day when I was cooking. I went to the cupboard, pulled out our food mixer which has been in our family for years and years and years and I realised that the plug on it, this one, had no insulation on the line or the neutral pins. Now that might not seem like a big thing but that change was made in 1984 which means this plug has been doing its job reliably and perfectly for nearly 40 years. It's been changed now for a modern version. The modern three pin plug came shortly before the end of the Second World War. It was clear that Britain would have to be rebuilt. It was also clear that there was a shortage of copper. So in order to maximise the amount of available copper and rebuild Britain, we had to come up with an entirely new system. So instead of bringing a copper cable all the way from the consumer unit to every single plug in the house, why not just daisy chain all the plugs together and join it up as a ring? Of course, this ring main would have to carry more current than the existing system. So as part of the design, a fuse would have to be incorporated into every plug in the house. The ring main, capable of providing 32 amps of current, could be providing power to say a small table lamp which may only have a 3 amp cable on it. If something goes wrong with that lamp, we need to protect that 3 amp cable because if 32 amps tried to go down it, well, there'd be a fire. The ring main would also allow more sockets which would in turn allow the uptake of more and more electrical devices. Of course, while redesigning the system, it made sense to incorporate all of the latest safety features from the outset. This included making the earth pin slightly longer so that it connected first and disconnected last. Also covering the line and neutral connectors in the socket with shutters, which could be opened by the now longer earth pin, and making sure that the design of the plug allowed it to only be inserted in the correct way. This was ratified in 1944 by the Works and Planning Committee and resulted in BS 1363, which is the standard for the three pin plug and socket that we're all now so familiar with. There have been some changes to the internals over the years and in August 1984, BS 1363 1984 was passed, which made it a requirement for the line and neutral pins to have insulation on to prevent electric shocks when plugging the plug in or taking the plug out. However, technically a plug from 1944 would still work in any modern socket in any house in the UK. Each English plug has an individual fuse located inside the plug itself. The design takes into account people with arthritis so they can grip the plug easily. The earth pin is slightly longer so that it can release the safety shutters on the UK socket. It also allows the earth pin to be the first to connect and the last to disconnect. There's plastic shielding on both the line and neutral connectors which means it's virtually impossible to get a shock when plugging the plug into a socket, even if your finger does stray into that gap. As you can see here, if you do tug on the cable with sufficient force to dislodge the internal wiring, the line and neutral are the first to disconnect. The slack in the earth cable means that it should be the last to disconnect. need a few tools firstly a screwdriver to suit the plug, a sharp knife, a pair of cutters and a ruler. Take your ruler and measure out approximately five and a half centimeters of cable. Score the cable with your knife being careful not to go all the way through. 
Once you've scored it, simply bend it back on itself and the cable will split apart. Be careful not to damage the internal wires. Using your screwdriver, remove the central screw on the pin side of the plug. This will allow you to remove the rear cover and expose the pins where the wires go. Now that you've removed the rear cover, this will allow you to offer up your cable with the sheathing removed and trim the cables at the back of the relevant terminals. So the line. The neutral. And leave the length on the earth. Once you've trimmed the cables, using your sharp knife, do the same as you did with the outer sheathing to reveal the inner copper conductor. Now that you have the rear cover removed, I find it easier to remove the pins from the plug body. This makes it much easier to insert the wires and screw down the terminal pins. However, do note which way round the pins go because they're often keyed. Now you will need to remove one of these screws and loosen off the other one to allow the strain relief to move to one side to insert the cable. So we just rotate the strain relief down. Personally I find it easier to remove the fuse from the terminal. This allows me to grip the terminal and insert the wire freely. Be careful as you remove the screw because it is easy to remove them too far to the point where they fall out. They can often be difficult to find on the floor. Insert your wires into the terminals making sure not to clamp down on the insulation. So you just clamp down on the copper part of the wire. There should be no copper protruding from the front of the terminal. You should end up with something that looks like this. Now it's time to insert the pins back into the plug body, making sure that they're all down snugly and that when you put the cable top on that nothing is going to get trapped in between the body and the plug top. It should look like this. It's now time to insert your fuse. I like to make sure that the fuse rating is clearly visible with the plug top removed. Insert your screws into the strain relief and tighten them up. Do ensure that they're not so tight that they strip the nylon from the strain relief. If that happens, the plug needs to be replaced. I take this opportunity just to have a quick check around the plug, make sure everything is tight, nothing is going to get pinched, that the strain relief is done up and then the fuse is inserted and visible before I put the plug top back on. Once you've put the plug top back on, Insert the locking screw in the pin side of the plug and tighten up. Again, this needs to be tight, be careful not to strip the threads. 